morning, guys. I'm gonna tackle this winch today. I pretty much foobar this bracket. There you can see that sun guns all bent up. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take that thing off and put it in the press, bend it back straight. <clears throat> also notice another little problem here. I have bent that bracket down and it's got my winch all not in line anymore. But I'll get that bracket off and get that plate bent back out and uh, we'll get started on this thing. There we go. That's five o'clock in the morning. It's stuck in a swamp strength there, bro. Anyway, we gotta straighten that out. That cover ain't never gonna go back on there. I'll put it in the press and uh, see what I can do with it. mess this thing up, that's for sure. Go past a little bit. Let's see where it's bringing it back to. I think that's it, boys. Let's see. Straighten it out or that cover won't ever go back on there. Let's see if we can uh, get that cover on there. The back ain't uh, well, there's one bolt hole in the back we can fix. Let's try. I think I'm just gonna put two on it. Fixed, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run to town and get a remote control, get a um, some switches. When I get back, we'll hardwire that thing to the inside and we'll hook the remote control up, put a new wind, a new rope on it, test it out. All right, guys, we'll see y'all in a bit. I run this Penske truck into something and tore the whole damn roof off of it. <laughs> it. The whole thing's about to fall apart going down the interstate. Not a good video, but this is crazy. 
better get over this bitch gonna run over you she don't give a shit he done tore the whole fucking roof off of that mother all right guys we got some parts that's the remote that i use you gotta kind of rewire it and stuff but it works good it's cheaper than that the other ones and it works good it's the switches we're going to use on the inside something i can't bump real easy it's kind of smooth push buttons we we'll use that for the on off for, for these buttons that way we can work on the inside this is the rope I need to do a review on these ropes man these things are tough as nails man I had to cut the hook off of this one to take it back. Which once I got there, they didn't like that kind too much, but that's what they told me to do, so that's what I did. Let's get out of this sun. I want to show you all this. This, this thing is heck to cut, man. See all them little fibers? I mean, there's a million of little tiny fibers. But what we're going to do is, the rope is broke, probably six inches from the drum and this rope still decent so what i'm going to do is you know after we get the winch fixed i got these uh i got these here we're going to put that rope through there and we're going to tie it and we'll have us about 90 feet of extra rope in the back of the jeep now if you get this rope from four wheel parts and buy the warranty you, know, you can buy a three year warranty for like 50 bucks and they didn't really give me no crap about cutting the uh, the hook off of it and just bringing the hook back to them because that's actually what they told me to do in the get go the guy there at the sales and said oh just cut the hook off of it bring it back we'll give you another one so I held them to that and now you know I got at least 60 feet of extra rope so there's been many times when that rope wasn't long enough, so now I can hook them through these eyelets, put me a good knot in it here, and I can put a clevis or a shackle through here and extend my rope. Anyway, I'm going to start wiring this stuff up, see what we can come up with here. This remote is a little bit different than I had before, so I'll figure it out, though. I'll let y'all know how it turns out. All right, guys, I'll be back when I get something going here. The other module I had didn't have this plug on it. It was more of a universal one and they didn't have that one. So one of these is going to be power. I may have to take it apart to see. Take the top of it. I'm going to say it's that green one. Because it's got that yellow stripe on it that's probably the negative that's probably in that's probably out I don't want to guess that though we take this cover off of here and see what we got all right guys I got this figured out <clears throat> cut that plug off of it I tore this apart I looked at the circuit board in there now you ever want to modify one of these like this look at your wires here your blacks are both negative they go to a ground on the chassis or the battery this blue wire is going to be your positive from the battery and then here is in out whichever both of these are switched these two wires here are your switched wires so you can activate something 12 volts here or 12 volts there with the the remote now some of the tractor supply ones are universal and you don't have to do all this but that's the little wiring diagram i want to pause it and write that down Let's see if i can hold it steady the black's negative blue's positive from the battery 
and your green is the switched and your brown is the switched I mean if you got a you know one of these traveler winches you just plug this in but we don't have that kind so anyway it works man you hook that up wire this up and you got a remote control if you got two inputs I mean just one input for forward 12 volts one input for reverse 12 volts it'll work like I was saying those four solenoids you got to have two and two two for in two for out and they got to go in different locations so it's kind of hard to make it work on that and also I'm gonna when I wire these up when if you was to do the same thing I'm doing this is gonna be inside the Jeep for in and out and these are metal switches right and this will be the on and off okay when you use something like this well do away with that we're, we're off of that this is going to go to the same contactor as in and out and this is going to switch my power on and off so nobody don't bump it but when you power up a coil like that a contact there's a coil inside there that pulls that contactor in and, and, and either way reverse or forward when you let go of that button that coil is going to send voltage back up that wire into this switch and it's uh, it's not it's it's going to be like a AC voltage kind of like a ignition coil just a little bit but it will bite you so what you got to do is is put a diode in here I mean I know this is kind of crazy for a lot of people to do but you can do it if you ask me you know I'll help y'all guys you guys with this stuff but you got to put a diode in here to keep the flyback current from that that uh, coil inside that contactor from sending voltage back up the wire and biting you. It may be fun to get one of your buddies to push it, but you know we don't want to be doing that. But here's another shot of that. That's a schematic a little wire diagram. It's not a schematic. That would be considered a wiring diagram. I done tested it. It works. All right, I'm gonna um, carry on. We're off of this. All right, guys, let's see. I got it in there. It's hot out here, buddy. I may have to wait. I need to quit buying Jeep parts and get me a damn shelter to go right here to. That's how it mounts in there. I hope y'all can see it. It's bright out here, and I can't see the screen. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our negative off of here, off the negative of the winch. And we're going to put our positive negative here and here. We're going to pull our voltage off of this. This is coming off the battery. And uh, we should be good to go. And then we'll start wiring it up going inside for the switches. We'll take a break though. I'll be back in a little while. And uh, like y'all are waiting on me. But anyway, let it cool off a little bit and we'll finish her up. Thanks. Hopefully I can get this in the shop. I'm going to show you guys these stuff. These pliers, I don't know if you've ever seen them. Any of you guys ever seen them? Watch this squeeze. Boom. <clears throat> These things are priceless. I'm going to use them all the time at work. Anyway, I'm going to um, wire this thing up and we'll test it. I'm sure it'll work. But, uh, I'll let you guys know. All right, guys. I'm woke up now. Let's see if I can show you all this. Uh, the sun's pretty bright. There's the controller. I showed y'all how I dug into that thing. There's your blue going to battery source from the battery. This thing can stay on all the time because that's what it does through that remote. Anyway, there's your battery source. Got your negative in the middle, in and out, the brown and the green and yellow. Now, you take the remote and that's out. $29 remote control. And, uh, <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna get the uh, Get the rope put on it. And up. Sorry about the wind. Shit. All right. I got her wired up. Let me show you how this.
this went. <clears throat> she blew the positive in the drawing to a battery source. The negative will go in the middle. That's a negative here going down to the chassis. The chassis to winch. In and out. That's it. You know, you gotta just hook it up like I said. The wiring, the diagram. Let's check it out. Cut it on. And. Let's see how far it'll go. <coughs> yeah, it's a $29 remote control man if you can literally go up there and grab from tractor supply and hook it up you know those ones from Warren and stuff they're expensive as heck and uh, I just I like to be able to make this stuff it went keeps there we did his gold man now we'll get in there and uh put his hard wire to the inside so if that thing goes out on me again We'll be able to work it from the inside of the Jeep. Hell, I might even use it more, you know, from the inside. Not even use this. Save my battery. Just use this when I'm out of the Jeep. I always wanted to do it that way, and I never took the time to... I don't like running wires through my firewall, you know. But I got a two-strand, um, like a 210, 10-gauge, because it don't take... Not 10, uh, not 10-gauge, 18-gauge. It ain't about that big. And a little... Same as that, really. I'm going to run it through there, and I'm going to use a power source from the inside on a fuse because it ain't going to take much to switch that little coil. That way we only got uh, two wires running through through there, and they'll be in a loom. Anyway, I'm going to get on that now, man. Right, we'll be back in a little bit. switches on that just because I want to it's a way over there out of the way anywhere down there is in the way anywhere else on the dash this is a good spot in my opinion we're gonna drill it out put the switches in it and see what it looks like if I don't like it we won't do it and we'll put the vent back in it but um, we're gonna give it a shot see how it works I don't know what I'm going to do about the noise, but here's what it is. Got that all taken care of. Alright, here's an easy way to line up some holes in the plate when you're building a panel switch panel just take your nuts off lay them how you want them to look basically and uh you ain't got to be perfect when you're building a piano just like that and then you drill your holes well that one's off a little center a little bit but it don't matter in here it'll work it'll look good Alright, we we'll get a very bit and uh, start making some holes. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's see what it's going to look like right here. I 
think that will be perfect. In. See, forward, pull the Jeep forward, reverse. I think that'll work perfect. Let me figure out how I'm going to attach it now. Drill some holes for some screws or something. We'll start hooking it up. Alright, boys, get her done. What y'all think? I got a little bit of space on the right of that on off to put something else one day if I ever need to. And that's it. Let's go see how it looks in the Jeep. Alright, guys, we got it wired up. Let's show y'all how I did this. See if we can make heads or tails of it. Anyway, this is going to be a power of uh, voltage wire, 12 volts. That's going to switch power from that switch to this side of these switches, all right? Then when you reach and push the button, it's going to connect this to this, and this is going to go out to the winch. The winch is solenoid, or uh, contactor, I mean, and this one same thing so all you got is power wire to that little switch that switch switches these to power and then you can work the winch from them too all right you go stick it in the jeep and uh we'll see what it what it looks like i'll show y'all guys this if you uh go to messing with that small contactor you see these little these are hard to find too you're not just going to go to the part store and, and really find these you have to look for them but, um, that's the ones you'll need because the little slot down in there is so small but you'll need them little tiny ones there I just want to show you all that so that way if you just to change over to that all bright, you'll know you're going to need these little tiny ass things. Alright. Well, boys, if you're stuck with me this long, I'm sorry I'm kind of blowing and stuff today. The noises I make, but uh, I've told y'all guys before that I herniated four, three discs in my neck. It's giving me hell today, brother. They want me to get my damn neck fused together, and there ain't no freaking way I'm doing that. So, if I'm going to keep making videos, y'all going to be listening to it. I'm sorry, but uh, it is what it is. Back to it. Here is my wires going in. It's turning into a bird's nest, ain't it? These two wires here, though, is going into the cab. That one. That one. I'll put power to that. It's running down there. I'm going to take and uh, get all this buttoned up here. What you want to do with, and you got all that many connections up there, and this thing's out in the weather, and all that's, well, it ain't out in the weather, but it gets, you know, mud and shit in it, you know. You want to spray all this stuff with that silicone spray, every bit of it. Just spray it down, soak it with it. Then when you put your cover on there, it'll be protected from corrosion. And uh, it looks like a mess, uh, but... It was like this under here before for almost two years. If you crimp all your crimp ends good and you use ring terminals and you don't you try to do it the easy way, those little push pins that look like this, you just slip on there, you don't want to do that. You want to do ring terminals on everything because it literally would have to pull this apart to um, come off of there. And even these things here, you know, I crimp the mess out of them two or three times and you got to have good crimpers. You know, these are snap-on or blue point crimpers I use and these here when you go buy your crimpers for doing this wire work these are Klein's them are the best that money can buy you get you a good pair of pliers like that when you crimp a fitting it's there it's not gonna come back it ain't gonna just pull out and always twist your wires when after you strip it twist them tight Stick them in there and crimp it with the crimper and you're good to go. But anyway guys, I'm going to lay all this down like so. 
and then we're going to spray it down with some silicone put the cover back on it and then we'll get on in there hooking it up on the inside all right guys we got it all stuffed back in there it's all back in there screw back in it will be done I tested this to make sure it was going the right direction with the remote control it is double check that so now we're running our wire into the cab this is what I'm using this is an insulated deal that's got you know the wires are in there but they got insulation around them because this is real this is real risky business I mean people run stuff through the firewall all the time they don't think about it but I've seen shit burn and I don't like that uh, at all but if you put fuses on stuff like you're supposed to you put your fuse at the source at the power source where it's coming where you're feeding from you won't have a problem but I just don't like doing this but I found a spot uh, everybody probably knows this but I don't even know if you can see it let me see if I can see it right down in there that rubber there's already a slit in it somebody's put something through it before so I'm going to use that spot there'll be a rubber all the way around the, the wire and we're going to run it to up there where our switch is going to be and wire it up see if it works I'll get back with y'all in just a second boys we got it it's painless it wasn't nothing to it somebody already had a slit in there so Got her through. I'm gonna get there and cut off my excess. Let me show you all this real quick. This is how I did my water bottle. Let's see this thing out of here. This is just a, a water bottle from, I think I got it at O'Reilly's. When you gotta take your, you know, for all this, you gotta take your water bottle out of your fender to do all this crap. Well, I like, you gotta have water to wash the windshield. So what I did was I took a grommet out of that old tank and I drilled this tank to fit it and all your wiring and everything will come out this fender and come around and go and plug right in here. No problem. And then it, it comes with this little basket mount. So you just uh, set him down in there like so. Put it in there and hold it down and there it is. I thought I'd show you all that when we was right here by it. But it went through that firewall through the rubber well. I'm gonna run it up there and uh, get this thing working. All right, and here we go. There's our wires going out to the winch, to the solenoid. Or oh, crap, man, I get it all mixed up. I'm sorry. The contactor. This is a power to one side of the contactor. Is power to the other side of the contactor. Okay. I pulled a voltage wire off of this plug right here it's something for the old radio but it's a it's, it'll be the radio fuse now it goes up into here you can't make heads or tails of it i know but that's your power wire to the switch on off that's going out i made these little pigtails where i could work with it easier but it's going to come here and connect and i did anyway but that's how it's going to work um I tested it works now that contactor only pulls about an amp or two amps maybe so you're only switching it's almost like switching a relay there's no, there's not much amperage there to switch that thing so it'll be fine like this you know and I didn't have to put the diode in there like I was talking about because there ain't enough flyback current to make it through that much wire it's absorbing it so we're good to go with that. I'll put it back together and um, we'll, we'll see how it works. All right, guys, job completed. Took me all day, <laughs> but we got it done. Check him out, we gotta switch it on. Put it to work in here, which is another good thing because when the kids are in here or whatever and people are pushing buttons and whatever, it won't, it won't you know mess my damn winch up or hurt somebody you gotta switch it on switch no it don't work without the power switch the power on 
We're letting rope out. We're going, pulling rope in. I got the rope off of it right now, so. That winch is sounding a little sick, man. I think I, I think I heard it the other night. Um, we're going we're gonna to run it till it quits, and uh, if we do, we're going to get a, a bigger worn winch and beef up that bumper. I mean, that winch there is 10,000 pounds. I mean, 9,000 pounds. But the problem is with it is the battery voltage. So probably uh, next week sometime, I'm going to make another video. We're going to take, I got a bunch of six volt batteries a customer was throwing out they're gel cell batteries they're basically just like a um just like a um optima you know same type of battery agm battery anyway they give me eight of them and if we can find two of them that's good out of them eight we're going to wire up two of them in series and put them back there in the back and attach them to the battery for will so we'll have some more power for that winch it works good for me if I've been driving all day and I just, you know, have to use it for a minute. But, man, if you have to use it for more than 10 minutes, you spend more time recharging the battery back up and then anything. But guys, we got that done. I'm happy as heck that we did it. I'm glad if y'all stuck with me all the way through it, man, I appreciate it. I mean, I know I've been whining a little bit like a little sissy today, but damn Nick's been killing me, brother. But there it is. I say we get that that rope and go ahead and put that rope on there. Y'all might as well see that too. We do the whole dang job. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I want to show y'all this. See, I was telling you that winch is sounding a little sick. It's got a little bit of play in it right there, but that drum gets so daggum hot, man. There's brake shoes in there, and it gets hot. I was going to wrap it with fiberglass tape to keep some of that heat off of it. But I'm scared that tape will slip and cause me cause me some problems to get all tangled up in the rope. So I'm just going to put it back the way it is. That rope's got a protective sleeve on it anyway for that purpose. And that's really what melted on it before. I ain't never going to use my winch like that again. I mean, that's over with. So I'm going to, uh, let me get the rope out and uh, we'll, we'll put it on there. All right, boys, let me show y'all something here on these ropes <clears throat> when you change them and that is bolt to the island on this side right here little island on there but this uh cover this little sheave cover here it goes way down the rope that's what protects you your winch from melting now that thing's got a crease in it you can't hardly see it see that i mean you might be able to see it there's a crease in it you want to get that flat now, somebody might want to argue with me about it, but I can guarantee you I have used this winch more than most people would in the last two years in a lifetime, I'm telling you. But um, get this, uh, get all this flat all the way down. That way you rope. That way when it covers your drum, it don't give the rope nothing to pull down in between. You know what I'm saying? It'll be a flat, nice base for it if you have that crease laying flat. All right, I don't know if I'm best spool this thing on here holding this phone, but um, there ain't nothing to it. It ain't like cable. I mean, you can stretch it on there if you want to, but this stuff don't stretch. So when you get it on there, it's good to go. It's just the tighter you get it, the, the less likely it is to pull down in between the, each other, you know. But let me get it on here, and I'll show you what it what when we get done completely. Okay, with that flat side. That crease over, laying flat. I like when you do a cable, you gotta help that cable get over there. Be careful doing this crap, but you wanna you wanna run that all the way across there if you can and get it to. Like that. See now your your rope has got a nice hard base to sit on. If you if you turn that thing all like that, don't pay no attention to it, 
it'll be all crooked and stuff but keep that flat Guys, let me get my gloves. I can't stress enough how much better this rope is than a cable. your signal to stop when you see that black rope. And the only thing about these these uh, tractor supply these tractor supply um, remotes is they got a little bit of delay to it. Watch and listen when I push that button. This one actually ain't as bad as the other one was. It's not at all. You know what? I might be telling y'all bullcrap. That's what it was. It's slow to stop, you know. Anyway, there it is. One repaired, one winch. First time I've had to work on it in two years, but other than putting that remote control on there. Guys, these ropes are definitely worth the money. I mean, if you use your Jeep like I do, you would, if you ever get one, you won't never go back to a, a cable. There ain't no way. They come out, they come off the spool easy. You ain't got to pay as much attention to them. And look how how nice that looks. And y'all seen me put it on there. I didn't even pay much attention to it. I just put it on there. You try to do that with a cable. Anyway, that's that. We got her done in here. Looks pretty good. Now, we got to clean this daggum Jeep out. I'm going to do that next. And if I can get the... I can't find my spray gun from a from a U-pole Raptor liner, but I might order a gun and try to spray it. We got to get this Jeep ready for the Fourth of July weekend. We got a trail ride we're going on for the whole weekend. Hopefully, I can get some good video and we'll be camping and stuff like that. But anyway, I guess that's it, guys. Y'all stayed with me through this whole thing. That was a long video. But look at here. Let me show you this real quick. I'll let y'all go. This is the other rope. I put the ends on it when I was resting. But we got a hundred foot. Man, eh, not a hundred foot. Probably about sixty feet of spare rope. And that's two years of wear and tear on that thing. Look at that thing. It's furry. But it's still strong. The only reason it broke at the base was that some gun got so hot that black sheathing that you seen on the very first part of the drum and the last part of the drum it melted that to the drum and what it did was it got to a piece of the rope and the guy I was hooked to 
kind of snatched back and it shocked it and it uh it broke it off right there but that's another thing about this rope though it broke on me all i did was tie it in a knot and lip like you know how you do a spool on a um a bait casting fishing reel i tied it like that wrapped it around there got it going and used it for the rest of the nine i could have used it that way if i didn't have a warranty on it it just would have been shorter that's another thing about these ropes you break a cable you're done you break one of these ropes and it is not easy to do you can tie a knot in it and keep on getting it buddy i like stuff that's um has a backup plan just like our new switches we just put in there if i see something goes bad dude i get a backup plan every time but all right i'm rambling i guess that's gonna be it i appreciate y'all guys watching me and I know all this shit was close up and stuff, but I had to record it all myself, and uh, I'll get better at it one day, I guess. But y'all have a good one. Don't let them damn forms get you down. Get under there and figure it out, brother. All right, bye.